Welcome to Spoiler in Time, the full experience where we take a season or a series uh, that is either beloved or important or somehow otherwise significant in the world of television and watch the first, the ultimate, the lowest, and the last episode for for the full experience of what that show was like. I'm Tom Merritt. He's Brian Brushwood. Hey, man. Uh, so this is... Uh, we're we're starting a new journey. Uh, yes, we are. We, we we left Cheers behind, and now we're going back to what, in my mind, is the golden age of kind of procedural uh, man on the run hunting a thingy uh, entertainment. And uh, Tom, I was very very excited to dive into the six million dollar man, and I'm going to hold back my reaction. Because I want to hear yours. It's very tantric of you. <laughs> yes. Imagine everything slowed down and you hear. <laughs> uh, so the biggest problem I had was figuring out which is the first episode of the Six Million Dollar Man. Which which was its own saga. Uh, please, please. It really uh, was. Unpack that. Uh, so the $6 million man started as a made for TV movie based on a novel. And that's really kind of all it was supposed to be. And in fact, there's, there's even like plot differences between that original movie and what became the series. They changed certain characters. Uh, Oscar Goldman wasn't played by Richard Anderson. Uh, they, they changed Steve Austin from being an astronaut to a civilian, uh, there's, there's just lots of different things. It was such a success though, that they made two more movies. Uh, one was called wine, women and war. And another one was called solid gold kidnapping. Uh, and those made for TV movies did so well that they decided to make a series. The first episode of the actual television series that was not a made for TV movie was called population zero. When you go to watch The Six Million Dollar Man on Peacock or buy it from Voodoo or whatever, uh, you will find that the uh, Population Zero is listed as the seventh episode because they've taken those previous three made-for-TV movies and broken them up into two-part series episodes. So two for the first, two for the second, two for the third, meaning six episodes of the made-for-TV movie version, which have also been edited especially the first movie so that they fit nicely into the series because there were those changes and things like that. So if you're thinking, well, the made for TV movie premiere is the first episode of what eventually became a series. you can't really watch that. You're going to watch an edited version that was made for syndication later, but it does have the origin story in it. Uh, otherwise you're looking at the first proper television episode as episode seven, population zero, and that's where we ended up. So uh, I, I made the mistake, Tom, of being so excited to dive into this experience of the six million dollar dollar man that uh, uh, I watched the pilot for Knight Rider, and then I watched Dan Harmon's uh, homage to that conceit, Heat Vision and Jack, and because the pacing was so fast on, on actually both of them. Oh, this felt very, why did glacial. you do that? Why would you do that? Brian? I yeah. Did, because like, I was that excited because you I ate wanted, dessert before dinner. Like I, I, it's essentially I didn't what know you did. that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. I, I, I thought I was like, Hey man, get in the headspace. This is right, what right, everyone's right. about and so on. But, but, uh, but, but the pacing is, I think appropriate for a seven late seventies era movie, AKA glacial. Uh, they do the thing where he re explains I'm, you know, I'm half a robot, whatever. Yeah. The, I, I did not. Like, that made me feel better about picking this as the first episode because they clearly were like, okay, not everybody saw these movies. This is before DVRs. It's before VCRs. Uh, so we're going to reintroduce everyone to the character. Uh, yes. Uh, also, I, I did not realize how one for one tracking 
uh, Heat Vision and Jack uh, is 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 covering both. Pretty much, it's just Knight Rider, uh, 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 the Six Million Dollar Man, and the Incredible Hulk, and that's it. Like, there's somebody chasing him. There, whatever. I'm talking about another show. Uh, but uh, it uh, the production value was good. For the time, it was very good. I, I agree. Um, there there were some things about it, too, in the creation uh, that belied its 1973 production date. Um, you know, you had a, a fairly uh, diverse cast, you know, for 1973. Um, you, you had a, a woman who was the, the doctor expert and they even played with that. Like, <laughs> I don't know where she is, where he is. And then she's like, he's right here. It's yes. me, <laughs> you know, like, um, that, that I think a lot of people would think, oh, that's probably eighties. Uh, but 1973, um, and lots of computer references, granted the computers all were like LEDs and switches, but lots of computer references. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Uh, uh, the plot is a little bit simplistic, he says generously. Um, the uh, I, 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 I basically a, a what a, a jilted weapons maker wants to hold the government hostage by uh, 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 you know taking down a town or threatening the villain. The villain reminded me of someone we both know. I don't know if I should say, cause I, it was not in personality. It just kind of, it looks, uh, keep going, keep going. It reminded me of Leo Laporte. Uh, he does look like him. They just kind of looked the same anyway. Yeah. yeah. And he was using technology. <laughs> and obviously <laughs> using technology. Uh, yeah. But, and, and also technology was the flaw of Steve Austin uh, there was one moment, I don't know if you caught it, uh, Tom, and, and I try not to focus on these things, but, but we've, you know, uh, 3000 episodes in of production. I've learned a bit about how things are made. Um, every time I see any kind of curved mirrored reflective surface in any kind of anything that happened before 1980, I look for things and boy, oh boy, there's a moment where he puts on that helmet and you just have a full shot of the entire production team with, with including the extra who's about to show up in a yellow jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it's really and probably amazing. not visible, probably not at least as easily visible on a TV of the time. Right, because you're no. going to get that that VHF well, fuzz that'll just smooth it out. Yeah, well, yeah but but even then. Even if you saw it, you wouldn't know what you're looking yeah, at, right? Right. Uh, 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 like, uh, there's three point lighting. Uh, there's two giant soft boxes, mm -hmm. and you can see the staff on there, which, to be honest, makes for a better shot than you know just a reflection of a desert or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it it was really kind of up and down. Um, uh, started yeah, I, off there, slow. A couple of a couple of the big plot holes that I had to like not drive my truck through because they were so big. And then if I ignored them, I, I thought the rest of it was actually pretty tight and pretty interesting. Uh, they they go out of their way to tell us like, yeah, man, when I had that motorcycle helmet on, it didn't affect me at all. I'm like, oh, there's your cure. Get everybody motorcycle helmets. Nope. <laughs> They're just going to ignore that and be like, oh, that's why he survived so long. Uh, and then when they lock Steve Austin in the uh, in the freezer, he, he waits for his bionics to freeze up before he decides to figure out how to uh, use the gas line to uh, to break himself out of there. Which, this, you know. uh, this is one of those where it's like, are we going to ding him on? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I mean, it's like, uh, 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 yes, if you're being logical then guess what? You have no show. <laughs> right. You, you have to do the thing so that there could be a... Comedy. I mean, I do think like, oh, in a modern writing situation, they would have come up with, you know, and uh, to keep you from using your bionics before they freeze, we've, you know, added a titanium lock or something or it, other, it right? It will like, unlock until the third Yeah, act, it's got a 10-minute you know? <laughs> delay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I did like the fact that when uh, he sh when he throws the fence post that he bionic strength out of the ground, I'm like, that was actually pretty genius. Like, what do I have around? Oh, I'm going to MacGyver this. Okay, here we go. Yep, yep. 
I was like, oh, he's just going to throw it at the dish and knock the dish off so it can't broadcast the signal anymore. Oh, no. It goes right into the middle of the thing and blows it up. I'm like, there's 1973 television. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Uh, Production-wise, things I noticed, um, uh, it makes sense that Lee Majors was a real star at the time. That dude is fit and buff, and it shows. Um, The conceit is awesome. Uh, somebody in the chat said they weren't, they weren't using the bionic sound effect. You do hear it very, very briefly when he's bending the metal pipe as a practical mm-hmm. thing. Like, Hey man, you're not putting me to work. So I'm, I guess I'm building buggies now, you know, that, that, that kind of, yeah, thing. it's, it's like they're experimenting with like, maybe we should put some sound in here, but they haven't quite decided to use it all the it's, time. It's before they went full cartoon on that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, I got a. It's it's uh, surprisingly progressive for its time. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, Nineteen seventy-three. Fifty years ago. Fifty years ago, Tom. They yeah. made sure that there was an important scene with a, a person of color and uh, a reminder that women can be doctors too. Yeah. Um, uh. And they also made <laughs> nasty white people with technology the bad guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it was not. It was not uh, what at the t- I don't know what at the time would have been the popular foreign villain, probably Soviets, probably Russians still. But yeah, but instead it was could, a, it was it was a homegrown threat. It was a disgruntled uh, scientist who to, wanted uh, who want who was mad that his funding got pulled. The, yeah, uh, I thought that is, was a more sophisticated plot, to be honest. Yeah. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Also, they didn't kill everyone. They could have easily told this exact same story uh, and had everyone die the first time and like, we'll do it again at a bigger town, right? Uh, And had one survivor who just managed to be on the edge. Uh, I thought it was more sophisticated to have it be everyone, they thought everyone was dead, which they probably should have been able to tell they weren't dead, but they thought everyone was dead. uh, And then it turned out it was a temporary effect. Well, uh, because the whole thing turned out to be a blackmail scheme, essentially. Right, where it's right. Like, and uh, so he would didn't, like and that made sense too. That was a more sophisticated yeah. uh, uh, situation it, as well. It was uh, ahead of its time. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, I didn't love it. I definitely took advantage of the fact that I could wa- I could keep one eye on it <laughs> while I was watching it. Uh, um, I might have had a baseball game running uh, up on the television in the hotel room while I watched this on my phone. But. And, 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 and that should be a disclosure that, that we give out whenever we're not giving our full attention on it, because there are times that when both either of us wa- like really give our full attention, we're like, what is this garbage? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Uh, so, so it gets a bit of, uh, of a pass on that, but I definitely, I watched the first half with my 11 year old, and I began began to become apologetic, and then I went to HQ and watched the second half and enjoyed the second half a lot more <laughs> because I knew I wasn't having to apologize to a eleven uh, year old who was Makes a accustomed to yeah. faster things. Yeah, yeah. And this this was very this was meant to be watched by people who in a household who might not be paying full attention. So you give them lots of space so they don't feel like they miss too much. Um, do you, yeah. do, do you think we violated a rule of like, is this, I guess, technically it's the first, right? Well, I mean, that was our whole conversation at the beginning, right? It's like, how do you decide what is first? Uh, and we sort of went with the way fan sites define it. Uh, so most fan sites define the movies as problematic at best, as far as fitting into the canon of the rest of the series and list them separately from the episodes. So if we're going with first episode, this is the first episode of the TV series. In that case, uh, my only complaint is that the, uh, the opening, uh, was not the full opening of the story of, uh, yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah. (laughs) A man barely alive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, poor peanuts, Donnelly. When I, I actually like that little like reminiscent, scene when he's walking with the guy that he knew because he grew up down the road and, and like i uh, remember when you punched peanuts donnelly in the face or whatever it was i don't even remember i just 
Uh, that was my last note in my notes. Poor Peanuts Donnelly. Compared name. to other first episodes, I uh, uh, you, you know what? This is a new game we could play. Yeah, uh, yeah. Now that we're doing multiples. Uh, we did Cheers. We did the West Wing. Uh, compared this first episode to those two. It's hard because it's not a pilot. Cheers was a full on pilot. West Wing was a very much a first episode. It was also technically a pilot, but I think they knew it was get picked up. Uh, Cheers was actually not shot before a live studio audience in, in the first episode, right? So it was very different in a lot of ways. Uh, this has the advantage of having had those three movies so that you have a smoother production, but being from 1973, much different pacing, much different scale to judge it by production value wise. Uh, but overall, I think it's the third best of the three, but not by like scads and scads of, of room for me. What about you? Uh, yeah, uh, Tom, mathematically, every one of them has to be the least awesome of a starting point. And I think we found one. <laughs> no. I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, as we continue to do the full experience on other shows, there is room behind population zero for for worst first episodes to show up i believe it i yeah. believe it however for now congratulations <laughs> you are the least best oh <laughs> that reminds me i actually really loved when they interrogated him and he just answered all their questions <laughs> i'm like this is supposed like that, I, was, I, he, that was pretty dope he's like I'm not gonna lie <laughs> six million dollars yep. <laughs> yeah uh, that was great. Uh, that is six million dollar man episode one or seven, depending on your how how you're counting. Uh, population zero. Now we this is less of a conundrum than the first episode was. Uh, but we have a little conundrum for best episode. The highest ranked episode on IMDb is what we usually go by. Uh, the highest ranked by far uh, on IMDb is Kill Oscar Part Two getting a, an 8.3 out of 10. Now you may rightly ask, oh, was Kill Oscar part one like an 8.1 or an 8.2? Should we watch them both? Kill Oscar part one is not an episode in the $6 million band. It is an episode of the bionic woman. Oh dear. They did the comic book thing. Part one is bionic woman. Part two is $6 million man. Part three is Bionic Woman. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, look, all right, all right. Uh, if we had infinite time, I think we would both agree. And keep in mind, when I lived in Norway, one of the few American TV shows that I could see was The Bionic Woman. So I have an affection for The Bionic Woman. Uh, however, uh, I think we should judge the episode on its own merits. <laughs> I am very much with you. Uh, I, I, this is the best episode of Six Million Dollar Man, according to people. And they didn't say, well, best episode if you've watched two episodes from another series. It just, it just got rated, rated highly. So oh, this is, this we is, know this that is... that's not exactly what people mean when they rate it, but I think you're right. I think we need to just judge it. If it's that good, Maybe it'll stand on its own. This is the beauty of the full experience. Uh, I cannot wait. Uh, Tom, I think we're going to have to spin this off into its own podcast. It's I mean, really amazing. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. And it's really, really fun. Uh, so watch along with us uh, in whatever way you wish. Uh, episode six of season four, 406, Kill Oscar part two. Uh, and of course you get these episodes faster. If you're a patron, even if we do spin it off as a second podcast, I don't think we're going to take it away from the patrons. Uh, so be sure to be a patron at patreon.com slash cord killers. And we'll spoil you again with the full experience next time.